Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a character customization in multiplayer. So I've made this very simple UI here where you can just set up your character. So on this one let's make him with a green body, a round head and some blue legs. And now I'm going to start the client and would you look at that, round head, green body, blue legs. Now let's go on to my game view here and let's give him a triangle head. Yes. And let's give him a red body and some green legs and let's join. And will you look at that? These two sexy specimens are now spawned. You can see they can see each other and everything works just fine. And as you also noticed, his body was also set for the client that joined and everything. So everything is synchronized correctly. Now let's look into how you can do this yourself. First things first, I've set up a few things already. I've set up just the base of a player. From him, I already have my existing character set up script, but I'm going to be removing this and creating a new one with you. And other than that, it's just a completely normal multiplayer character. I also had these three different heads here to show you exactly how you spawn them. And as you can see, there's nothing special about them i made them in pro builder but they're not even network objects other than that you can see that i just did it with colors so i had a red a green and a blue and these are just colors that are being set on the player itself so if i go into the player you can see it was the same body very very sexy doesn't look like a rocket ship at all and as you can see this is just where i changed the material so here i have red otherwise the material would have been changed to green or blue now first things first i'm not going to show you how to set up this ui but i will show you how it is set up already so as you can see here i just have a panel and here I just have a title, an image, and a next button, and it's the exact same for all of them. The next button calls a function inside the script, and I'm gonna show you how to make just this. So I'm gonna hide these two away, and we're gonna be making new versions of them. So these are my old scripts. Now I'm just gonna take these and move them in here, and I'm gonna show you how to make new ones. So let me go into the canvas as well and remove this character UI customizer. Now that that is removed, let's make a new script and we can just call this one the character customizer. This is going to be sitting on the UI and let's just set that on there and start creating. Now inside of this script, let's just remove what's here already. It's really important that you do not make this script network behavior. As you noticed, I could customize my character before I connected to the network. And then once I connected, that was pushed to the network. This is really important that we have then one script that's mono behavior and one script that's network behavior on the player. So first things first, we want to make this a singleton in order to grab this later on. So the way that we do this is we write public static, then our class name, which is character customizer. And then we can just call this whatever we want. In my case, I'm going to call it instance. And I'm just going to set this instance to, well, this object. So I'm going to say instance equals to this. And always to simplify it, I really like doing it like so to see that we're not using this for anything else other than this one line. So let's just move these up here so they can stand by themselves. And let's start writing our script from here. Now, one thing that we know that we want is the index indices. So if we just make a hidden inspector because we have no need to show them, but we will need to grab them. So we make them public and then we can just make them integers because we want to grab them in a list. So then in my case, I have my head index, I have my body index, and I have my leg index. These indexes are what's going to be sent over the network to synchronize for everybody. This is why we're working with integers because it's just super lightweight to send. It's super easy to synchronize and keep synchronized for everyone who joins. Then we're going to have both the colors or the objects that we want to spawn in lists, and we're going to grab them by these indexes. That's how it's going to work. It's actually pretty simple. So first of all, let's make these functions for the buttons to actually call. Now I'm going to make a function for each so i'm going to make a public void next head index and i'm going to do the same for the body and the legs so let me just make those and it's going to be next body index and next leg index. Now, first things first, what these are gonna do is they're gonna grab the head index and say plus plus. And well, let's think about what we wanted to do. Here. First of all, we wanted to represent what we're changing in the inspector. So of course we want to grab these images and change them for something. Now, in the case of the body and the legs, I wanted to change them for colors so we can make a list of colors. And in case of the head, we wanted to change it with shape. In this case, I want them represented by just images or sprites. So we can go ahead and make those lists and grab the references for these three images that we're going to modify. So first of all, let's make the lists. So I'm going to make them serialize field because we have no need to grab them in public. So we can make a private list. And then I want a sprite list to represent the heads. So I'm just going to call these head images and populate that as new list. I am also going to make a serialize field to grab the list of colors. So I'm going to make a list of type color, call these colors and make this a new 
list. And then I'm just gonna make a serialized field for us to grab the images. So I'm gonna make a image component here, which is gonna be of type in case just it asks, it's gonna be unityengine.ui, which means you need to be using unityengine.ui up here. And then we can grab the head image, we can grab the body image, and we can grab the leg image. And just for good measure, actually, we can call this list up here head image sprites instead to avoid any confusion. So we have head image and head image sprites. And this is basically all the information that we need. Now, first of all, we already know the length of our list of image sprites is also going to be the same list of heads that we're going to have, which means that this head in index should never ever reach the head image sprites length or count. So the first thing that we can do is we can take the head image sprites dot count. If that is less than or equal to the head index, we want to set the head index to zero. Or we want this to do this after we've set the head index plus plus, just to make sure that we do not surpass the head image sprites dot count. In case we do, it will throw an error and that's no good. So we just want to reset at this point. Now, another thing is we also want to make sure that this list up here isn't empty. Just a good little check to make sure that the head image sprites are not empty. So we can say if head image sprites dot count is less than or equals to zero, we just want to return out of the function as to not have any issues. And now the last thing that we need to do is we just need to set the head image dot sprite equals to the head image sprites at the head index and there we go now we've changed this and it's basically the same thing that we got to do for the body and the leg index just with the colors list instead so we can actually copy this whole thing and just change out the things that we need so up here we need to check the colors.count in here it is the body index that we want to change down here once again it is the colors and here again it is the body index here it is the body image dot material dot color that we want to change to the colors at the body index. And of course, this also needs to be body index. So it says body index all four places. And it's the body image that we modified the color of to show the color in the list. Now we can just copy all of this, put it down here to the leg index and just change all of this for leg index instead. So leg index, leg index, leg index, and leg index. And of course, it's the leg image that we want to modify. And this should basically do it. Now, just to have everything represented off of the start, we can actually just run each of them in here. Now, keep in mind that doing it like this basically means that we are actually going to be setting all of them to one because we are plus plusing them. So you're actually not going to be starting on zero. You're going to be starting on one. In case you don't want that, you could technically set them to minus one up here to begin with and then have them be set to zero. That's also very doable but i'm completely fine with them starting at index one so now that this is so let's go populate everything if we go to the canvas we can grab the head image we can grab the body image and we can grab the legs image i'm gonna close these up again oh actually i'm gonna open them again because we also of course need to set the next functionality down here so i'm just gonna say that on click i drag the canvas down here go into the character customizer and say next leg index and i'm gonna do the same for body and for head just like so. And the last thing that we want to do is just populate the information down here in the canvas. So on the colors, I just wanted the first one to be a reddish color. I wanted the second one to be a blue color. And I want the last one to be a green color. Just like so. And with the heads, I already made some sprites up here. The first one's a triangle, second one's a circle, and next one's a square. Now, one thing that's important with this setup is that the element zero in your lists, also the lists that are going to be on the player, are going to be the ones that is already pre-set up on the player. So as you can see, he has a red body, he has a red legs, and he has the triangle head. And that's exactly why I've set it up like so. So the triangle is first here and the red color is first here. The rest of them doesn't matter, but we just want the base setup to be the same for all of them. Now that this is populated, let's go ahead and look at what we have to do on the player. So for this, let's make a new script. This script, I'm just going to call character customizer setup. You can call it whatever you'd like. I know this might be some weird naming. You can do it exactly how you want to. The name isn't really that important. Now for this, of course, we want a list of the heads and the colors. So I'm just going to make serialized fields just as we did before with a private list that holds the game objects of the heads. Then I'm going to be doing the exact same, but for the colors. So I'm just going to copy it, say colors, and this is going to be of type color. So now we also need the indexes in here that we're going to be setting. So have private int of head index. We have a private int of body index. And we have a private int of 
plug index. In order to keep these synchronized across the server at all times, we're going to be using the good old sync var functionality. If you're not familiar with this, I have actually made a video on it, but we're also going to be going over a bit of it here. So one thing that we can of course not forget is to set the script to network behavior. This also means that we need to be using fishnet.object and we also need to be using fishnet.object.synchronizing to have the sync bars work. So now we can open the onstart client functionality. First of all, we want to check if we are the owner. So if base dot is owner, we want to do something here. The reason for this is the owner is the one that's going to have the information needed from the character customizer. If you remember, this is a single player script, which means none of this right here is on the network at all. So over here, we need the owner of the game object to tell the server what data do I have in here, which is basically these three indices. So I can just make a new custom functionality that sends that to the server. So I'm going to make it a server RPC and we're going to say require ownership equals to false. Technically we are going to be the owner i just always like to do this as a good safeguard in case any errors were to happen i'm going to say void and call this set character index and then here we need the head index i'm just going to call it the head int just to avoid any confusion and we need the body int and we need the legs int. and right here it's basically as simple as setting the indexes that we have up here equals to the ints that are getting sent through and just like so these are now being set on the server as soon as we call it so let's go ahead and do that now and the way that we get these is if you remember we made this a singleton and this is the exact reason why so all i need to do is grab the character customizer instance and the integer that we need so i'm going to grab the character customizer dot instance dot head index and we can just copy this and paste it twice and just change the index so here it is the body index and here it is the leg index and right now these are being synchronized to the server but now we've got to figure out exactly how do we make the server change things because we could try and make a function call either an op servers rpc or a target rpc or a server rpc to make things actually change the issue is if we call that in the on start client that would be too fast actually which means that the variables will not yet be synchronized in order for this to actually work now i could test and show this you can test it yourself but what i'm basically saying is that this will not synchronize fast enough over the server to actually have the change done so luckily for us syncvar has a really useful functionality to actually call methods automatically as soon as they receive a new value or a change so what we can do is we can make a void for every single one of these syncvars that are going to change so we can make a void set head and we can do the same for the body and the legs. Now, one thing that the sync var needs is to send in some information. So we need to get the integer of the old value. We need to get the integer of the new value that is being sent through. And we need to get a pool to know whether or not. So now we can go up here in the head index and we can write on change. And this is being taken in as a string. So we just need to call the set head here, but just as a string. So it's important that you spell it right. And that's basically it. Now, when something is changed, this will be sent in and we will have the new value right here. And we can also check if we are the server. So in this case, for example, if we are the server, we actually don't want to run it because it's only really relevant for the clients to change this. Now, if, for example, this had to, something to do with actually spawning something, well, you'd actually want the reverse of this. You would want to do it as a server and make sure that the server is the one spawning things. But right now, we don't want the server to do anything. And we can make this exact same setup for the body and legs. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that this is set up, all we need to do now is actually have the changes be applied. So now we actually get the value through. All players that now join will get this synchronized automatically because of the sync var. And as soon as it's synchronized, it will call these functions to set it on the relative player. One thing that is for some reason functionality in Fishnet is the sync var for some reason makes it serialized as well. So one thing that we just want to do is to make this hide an inspector because we have no need to see these values in the inspector. And now all we basically need is another serialized field to get the game object of the head because of course we want to be able to change out the head one thing that's really important for me, for me to explain here and this is exactly why it was important that the standard values were the same as is already set on the player that's because if in this case you can see the head index the body index and the leg index is not set that means from standard they're going to be zero which means if they get in zero they're actually not changing and the functionality is not being called but that's why that we have the base value set to what's already set on the player so if zero is received it's just already what's set on the player so we don't need to actually receive receive anything. I hope that makes sense. If not, just ask in the comments below. Now, since I'm only changing the color of the body and the legs, I can actually just grab the renderer and not the whole game object. So I'm just going to grab the renderer and I'm going to call it the body and the legs. And for good measure, we also want to, of course, store where the head's current position is. So we can say private vector three head position just like so. And now let's go ahead by one by one. Now the easiest ones are the body and the legs. So let's do that first. All we want to do is we want to grab the body 
.material.color and set it equals to the colors at the new value, which is the index that's being sent through. And that's it. This will actually just work. And let's go and do the exact same for the legs. Now for the head, we just need to do a little bit more. First of all, we want to store the current head position. So we have the same starting position as always, which is going to be the head that transformed our position. Now at this point, we want to destroy the current head because we, we of course want to change it, which means that we want to instantiate a new head, which is going to be in the heads at the new value index. It's going to be at the head position, which we just stored. It's going to have the same rotation as the current player. So transform the rotation, and it's going to be set as the child object of the current transform. And this is basically it. Everything now should just work. So let's just go test it out first of all locally. One thing that I of course also forgot to do is we of course want to disable the character customizer UI when we start the game. So what we can do is basically just when the player spawns, we can actually grab the character customizer dot instance dot game object and set it to active or false. Now we can go test this out. I just realized that I've actually made a mistake here. In the character customizer, I set the body image and the material. I set the image material color. And I shouldn't be doing that. I should actually just be setting the image color. So let's just go back and test it now. So here we go. As you can see in here, now I can select the different shapes. It will cycle through those. Same with the colors. And if I now try and play, all right, of course, this works even better if you actually set the script on the player. So let's just do that real quick. So I'm going to set up all the parameters for the leg, the body and the heads. And I'm going to add all the heads in here, of course, in the right order with the pyramid first. Then I believe I had the sphere and then the cube. And of course, the colors were red, blue and green. And like so, now it should work. Let's try and select the red body, which is index zero and the green legs, which should be index two. And then let's select the circle head, which is index one. And boom, now she has green legs, circle head and a red body. And now let's go test it with multiplayer. Now I've opened both windows. Let's try and make the triangle head over here, circle head here. Let's make his body red and green and let's stick to this guy having blue and blue body. So it's blue and blue, round head. Over here we should see triangle head, red body, green legs and we should see that on both screens. And as you can see, this works perfectly fine. And yeah, this is basically it. I really hope that this was helpful to you. If you have any other tutorials that you'd like, leave it in the comments below and I'll write it down and make sure to do that. Otherwise, just leave a like, subscribe and yeah, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.